Praise be our Lord Jesus Christ. In a recent interesting interview on Fox News, titled The Church of Environmentalism, journalist Tucker Carlson has brought to light a contradiction that may have escaped the notice of many people, but which I consider extremely revealing. Carlson recalls that the American Constitution prohibits any state religion, but for some time the governing Democratic Party has imposed on the American people the globalist cult with its green agenda, its woke dogmas, its condemnation and cancel culture, its priests of the World Health Organization, the prophets of the World Economic Forum. A religion in all respects, all encompassing not only for the life of the individuals who practice it, but also in the life of the nation that publicly confesses it, adapts law and sentences to it, and inspires education and every governmental action around it. In the name of the globalist religion, its adherents demand that all citizens behave in accordance with the morality of the new world order, accepting uncritically and with an attitude of devout submission to religious authority, the doctrine defined ex cathedra by the Davos Synodrin. Citizens are not required merely to share the motivation that justify the health, economic or social policies imposed by government, but to give their blind and irrational assent, which goes far behind faith. For this reason, it is not allowed to contest the psychopandemic, criticize the management of the vaccination campaign, argue the groundlessness of climate alarms, oppose the evidence of NATO's provocation of the Russian Federation with the Ukrainian crisis, ask for investigation into Hunter Biden's laptop, or the electoral fraud that prevented President Trump from remaining in the White House, or refuse to stand by as children are corrupt with the LGBTQ obscenities. After three years of follies, incomprehensible to a rational mind, but amply justifiable in a perspective of blind fideism, the proposal formulated by the American clinic to ask patients to give up part of their anesthesia so as to reduce their trace of carbon dioxide and save the planet should therefore not be read as a grotesque pretext to reduce hospital expenses to the detriment of patients, but as a religious act, a penance to be accepted willingly, an ethical meritorious act. The penitential character is indispensable in this operation of forced conversion to the masses, of the masses, because it counterbalances the absurdity of the action with the reward of the promised good. Wearing the mask, which is useless, the citizen, religious adherent, has made his own gesture of submission, has offered himself to the divinity, the state, and the community. A submission 
confirm with the equally public act of vaccination, which represented a sort of baptism in the globalist faith, the initiation into worship. The high priests of this religion have even reached the point of theorizing human sacrifice by means of abortion and euthanasia. A sacrifice required by the common good so as not to overpopulate the planet, burden public health, or be a burden on social security. Even the mutilation of which to which those who profess gender doctrine are subjected, and the depriva deprivation of the reproductive faculties induced by homosexuality are nothing more than forms of sacrifice and immolation of oneself and one's body, one's health, including life itself, receiving, for example, an experimental gene therapy demonstrably dangerous and often deadly. Adherence to globalism is not an optional. It is the state religion, and the state tolerates no practitioners to the extent that their presence does not prevent society from exercising this cult. Indeed, it is presumption of being legitimized by ethical principles to impose on citizens what represent an incontestable superior good. The state also obliged the centers to perform the basic act of globalist morality, punishing them if they do not conform to its precepts. Eating insect and not meat, injecting drugs instead of practicing healthy life, using electricity instead of gasoline, renouncing private property and freedom of movement, enduring controls and limitation of fundamental rights, accepting the worst moral and sexual deviation in the name of freedom, renouncing the family to, be, to live isolated, without inheriting anything from the past and without transmitting anything to posterity, erasing one's identity in the name of political correctness, denying the Christian faith to embrace woke superstition, conditioning one's work and one's subsistence to the respect to respect absurd rules. All these are elements destined to become part of the daily life of individual, a, ba a life based on an ideological model that on closer inspection no one wants, no one has asked for, and that justifies its existence only with the bogeyman of an unproven and unprovable improbable ecological apocalypse. This violates not only the much vaunted freedom of religion on which this society is founded, but want to lead us step by step, inexorably, to the point of making this cult exclusive and the only one allowed. The Church of the Environmentalism defines itself as inclusive but does not tolerate dissent. 
does not accept directly engaging with those who question his dictates. Those who do not accept the anti-gospel of Davos are ipso facto heretics and must therefore be punished, excommunicated, separated from the social body and considered public enemies. They must be re-educated by force, both through an incessant harmony of the median and also through the imposition of a social stigma and truly extortive form of consent. Starting with the informed consent of submitting against their will to the vaccination obligation and continuing in the madness of the so-called city of 15 minutes, which is anticipated moreover in detail in the programmatic points of the 2030 agenda, which are ultimately dogmatic canons to the contrary. The problem with this disturbing phenomenon of mass superstition is that this state religion has not been imposed de facto only in the United States of America, but it has also spread to all the nations of the world, of the Western world especially, whose leaders were converted to the globalist world by the great apostle of the Great Reset, Klaus Schwab, its itself proclaimed Pope, who is therefore invested with an infallible and incontestable authority. And so, as in the Annuario Pontificio, we can read the list of cardinals, bishops and prelates of the Roman Curia and the dioceses spread throughout the world. So on the website of the World Economic Forum, we find the list of prelates of globalism, from Justin Trudeau to Emmanuel Macron, discovering that not only the president and prime ministers of many states belongs to this church, but also numerous officials, head of the international body, and major multinational corporation, and members of the media. To this must also be added the preachers and the missionaries work for the spread of the globalist faith, actors, singers, influencers, sportsmen, intellectuals, doctors, teachers, a very powerful, highly organized network widespread not only at the top of institution, but also in university and courts, in companies and hospitals, in the peripheral bodies and local municipalities, in cultural and sport association, so that it is impossible to escape indoctrination, even in a provincial primary school or in a small rural community. It is disconcerting 